Hey guys, Gizmodict here and this is my review of the Asus Zenfone Max M1. So this phone is a slightly improved version of the Zenfone Lite L1 that I reviewed a couple of days ago. And this phone sells for 7,500 rupees. It goes up against the Realme C1 as well as the Redmi 6, both of which are priced at 7,000 rupees and 8,000 rupees respectively. But Xiaomi and Realme decided to jack up the prices of these devices, so the Max M1 ends up being the cheapest phone in this price bracket. But still, the question is, should you buy the Zenfone Max M1? So that's what we're going to answer in this video, so make sure that you watch it till the end. Compared to the Zenfone Lite L1, this phone gets double the storage, 3GB of RAM, 4000mAh of battery, and an improved 8 megapixel front facing camera. From the outside, the phone is still made out of plastic, so you still get the plastic body with the metallic paint finish which is actually pretty good at this price point. But a small difference as compared to the Zenfone Lite L1 is that here you've got 2.5D glass on the front, so it actually makes the phone feel a bit premium than the competition. The display panel still remains the same though, you've got the same 5.45 inch 720p display which is actually good at this price point. It has nice colors and viewing angles and I honestly had no complaints with it, it's pretty good for the price tag. Where you might feel a bit disappointed on the Zenfone Max M1 is in terms of the internals. So the Max M1 gets the Snapdragon 430 processor, which is actually a 2 year old chip, so it doesn't feel that great on paper. But honestly, while I was testing out this phone, I had no issues with the performance on the Max M1. Even though it's a 2 year old chip, it can still easily handle games like Asphalt 9, I could easily play that game on this phone along with some other games but then when it comes to PUBG that's where I felt that this phone was bogging down. I mean if you're going to compare it with the Realme C1, the C1 is much better at gaming, you've got a Snapdragon 450 there but then that phone only has 2GB of RAM and 16GB of storage so you have to consider that as well. But then like I said I could play all of the other games on this phone smoothly except for PUBG so yeah ex apart from PUBG I think the gaming performance is pretty good. And as compared to the Redmi 6 I think this phone does better in gaming, the Redmi 6 cannot even handle Asphalt 9 properly and the Max M1 compared to that phone does a lot better in terms of performance. So yeah, while the Realme C1 will give you the best gaming performance, I think overall the Max M1 provides a more balanced performance and you get more storage and 3GB RAM on this phone. In terms of day-to-day -day performance, the phone was good as well. You've got Zen UI that is based on Android 8 Oreo and currently there are no news for the Android Pie update. You've got Zen UI here so it's very feature rich, in fact almost every feature that you get on the Zenfone 5Z, you have it on this phone because the Zen UI is the same. So yeah, a lot of features but then I think Asus can optimize the interface a bit more. I did face a couple of instances where I didn't find the phone to be very very smooth. So I think Asus can optimize it a bit more with the help of future updates. Coming to the cameras, you've got a 13 megapixel shooter on the back and although it's a single camera setup, it can still do portrait mode shots. And it's actually pretty good. I've made a dedicated video comparing the cameras of the Redmi 6 as well as the Zenfone Max M1 and I personally prefer the camera on the Zenfone Max M1, especially the 8 megapixel front face camera according to me is the best in this segment and it can take some really really good selfies along with portrait mode. So yeah for 7500 rupees I'm really impressed with the camera performance on this phone and like I said I've made another in-depth review comparing the cameras of this phone with the Redmi 6 so please check it out so that you guys can understand the difference even better. I'm gonna put a card here and the link would be in the description as well. But where I was let down a bit was in terms of battery life. Even though you've got a massive 4000mAh of battery on this phone, I could only get about 5 hours of screen on time on the Zenfone Max M1. It's not bad but then it's not as good as I thought it would be. So there is some issue I think maybe it's the old processor or Asus hasn't optimized this well but then I expected more battery life out of this phone. I mean I've seen phones with lesser battery capacities do better in terms of battery life. So while you can still get more than a day of battery life from the Zenfone Max M1, I still feel that there's a lot of potential and the battery life can be improved. So Asus, I think you should definitely optimize your software a bit more so that your phones can deliver better battery life. I had said the same thing about the Zenfone Lite L1, even the Zenfone Max Pro M1 even though it runs on stock Android, I genuinely feel that your phones can have better battery life. It's not just there yet and even though you're putting high capacity batteries, you're not making the most out of it. So yeah, in terms of battery life, while it's not that bad, I think that it can do a lot better. Another disappointment is the fact that there is no dual Volti on this phone. You've got two SIM card slots and a separate micro SD card slot, but then if you're someone who used two Geo SIM cards, then you're totally out of luck because dual Volti does not work. Volti works only on a single SIM card and that's the bummer because all of the other phones in this price bracket are now coming out with dual Volti. There's a fingerprint sensor on this phone as well on the back. It's very fast and I have no complaints with it. You've also got the face unlock feature 
and it does take like a second or two to recognize your face and then unlock the phone so yeah it's not the fastest but then still it works the call quality and the network reception was also good from the phone and the inbuilt speaker is also actually very good it's not rear mounted like the redmi 6 which was kind of annoying it's bottom mounted so i have no complaints with it so now the question is should you buy the zenfone max m1 well honestly if you can spend 500 rupees more and you want the best gaming performance and you don't mind the 2 gb ram and 16 gb storage then you can go with the realme c1 in fact i would have recommended that phone wholeheartedly for 7000 rupees but now the price is 8000 rupees of that phone and honestly 2 gb of ram and 16 gb of storage for 8000 rupees is a bit of a stretch i know there is a micro sd card slot on the realme c1 but then if you know Android, all of the apps are going to install on the 16GB of onboard storage and not on the micro SD card slot. And I don't think that Realme C1 has adaptable storage support. So yeah, 16GB of storage for 8000 rupees is a bit of a stretch. But then if gaming performance is not your priority and if you have a budget of 7500 rupees, then the Zenfone Max M1 makes a lot of sense over the Redmi 6. You've got really good cameras, the performance is good and at 7500 rupees, it's a very value for money phone. So if you have a strict budget, then I don't mind recommending the Zenfone Max M1. That is all I have to say about this phone. If you guys like this video, then please hit the thumbs up button. And if you guys have any more questions about it, then please, please let me know in the comments. As always, if you're new here, then definitely hit the red subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell icon. Thanks for watching and I'll be back in your notifications very, very soon. Peace.